Hello, all of our students. Today, I am going to do end of year evaluation 2020 Department of Education UA Province paper. So, this is paper 2. You already know that you get 3 hours. There are two parts, part A and part B. Part A, you get 6 questions, but you have to answer only 5 questions. And also in part B, you get 6 questions. Select only 5 questions to answer. Each question in paper 2 worth 10 marks. And how many minutes you can spend for each question? Take less than 18 minutes per question. So in the, this paper, you get question number 1. Then you get questions 2, 3, 4. Then question number 5. Question number 6 and then you get part B, question number 7, 8, 9, 10, then 11 and question number 12. So in this paper you can ask for line papers and for the graph question ask for a graph paper. So let's do this paper now. Answer only five questions in part A. First question, the following complete table shows some values to draw the graph of the function y equals x minus 1 whole thing squared minus 3. So this is a quadratic graph. So you have to fill in the blank and then draw the graph and answer the given questions. So let's fill in this blank what you do. You have to find the value of y when x equals 1. x equals 1, substitute. Substitute the value. y equals x minus 1 squared minus 3. Substitute x equals 1. What happens? 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 3, you get minus 3. So this value is minus 3. And then draw the graph of the above function taking 10 small division along as one unit in both axes using graph. The scale is given so you have to take one unit as 10 squares. So let's start with that starting with minus 2 here. Minus 2 minus 1 0. So let's take this one is the y axis. So let's draw the y axis first. Then mark it. So maximum is 6 and minimum minus 3. So let's start with 6 here. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is the x-axis. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Then you can draw the x-axis. So x axis minus 2, 2 plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, both axes here this way, 10 small squares is 1 unit means very small square is 0 0.1, 1 over 10. This way also 0 0.1. Now let's draw the graph. First, you have to mark the points. Minus 2, 6. Minus 2, 6 is here. Minus 1, 1. 0, minus 2. 1, minus 3. Then 2, minus 2. 2, minus 2 is here. 3, 1. And then 4, 6. 6 is here. Now you can smoothly connect the points. So what is my advice? You can take the ruler to just connect the end points. Here to here and here to here. Then use the pencil. Now we'll smoothly connect here from here. value and then from here 
will mark the other part. So, this is the quadratic graph. So, how many marks you are getting for these two parts? One mark you are getting for this part and then three marks normally to draw the graph. One mark to adjust the scale, one mark to mark the points and another one mark for joining the points smoothly. Now let's use this graph to answer the other questions. Third part, write the equation of axis of symmetry. So what is axis of symmetry? So here the line passes through the x coordinate of the vertex point. So this vertical line. So let's draw it, but you don't have to draw the line just to make sure that this is the axis of symmetry. So what is that? The x value is 1. So you can write x equals 1 for the axis of symmetry. Then find the range of x when the function increases in the range of y in between minus 2 to 1. So y is in between minus 2 and 1. So let's draw the y values. y equals minus 2 is this line. So we have to draw a horizontal line. Minus 2. y equals minus 2 is here. y equals plus 1 is here. Then they are asking in between these two, the function is increasing. So function is increasing means here to here. So this part. So what is the range of x? So you have to refer this point here. That means x equals 2 and this point x equals 3. So I'll highlight the required part with another color here. This part here to here. They're asking here to here. Increasing in between minus 2 and 1. So the values are 2 and 3. X is in between 2 and 3. Here these are not equal. So don't write down equal sign. So x is in between 2 and 3. So how many marks you are getting for this part? So let's look at the marking scheme. So you are getting 2 marks for writing the equation and 2 marks for writing the inequality. Then let's do the last part. Find the roots of the equation x minus 1 whole thing squared minus 3 equals 0. So that's the same graph that we have drawn. x minus 1 squared minus 3. Roots and, fi and hence find the value of root 3 to the first decimal place. So ro root means this is y equals 0. So when this is y equals 0, what happens here when you take minus 3 to the other side? You get this squared is equal to plus 3. Then take square root both sides. You get x minus 1 equals plus or minus root 3. But we need the positive root 3 value. So what is the positive root 3 value? You have to take the positive root value for the graph. So we have to find out when y equals 0, what are the x values? So one point is here. What's the other point here? So here we have to mark here. This one is minus 1. And this is minus 2. So this is in between 0 and minus 1. So here minus 0 0.7 and 2.7. Those are the root values. So here root values are x equals minus 0.7 or x equals 2 point, what's the other value? 
But to get the positive root 3, you have to take the positive value, 2.7. So substitute 2.7 here. So you get 1.7 is root 3 value. So that's the approximated value from the graph for root 3 value correct to one decimal place. So how many marks for this part? You are getting two marks for this part. So altogether we gave 10 marks for this whole question. Let's take question number two. A man invests 80,000 rupees in a company to buy shares at 20 rupees which pays annual dividend of 4 rupees per share. He used the annual dividends income as a down payment to buy a computer price 91,000 rupees as a higher purchase. He pays the remaining amount in 15 months. The interest for the loan is 24%. And interest is calculating to the reducing balance method. Find the value of monthly installment. So first we'll find out how many shares he bought from investing 80,000 in a company. Number of shares. How you find out number of shares? Number of shares is equal to Invested amount is 80,000 rupees and divide by the market price is 20 rupees there. So when you divide by market price, you get how many shares he bought. So 4,000 shares he bought. 2 times 1, 2 times 4. Here 4,000 shares he bought. But what's the dividend income? 4 rupees per share. So dividend income is equal to 4,000 shares and each share worth 4 rupees. So multiply by 4. This is the amount he put it to by the computer. So 91,000 rupees is the computer price but he Paid 16,000 from that. So what is the amount to be paid? Amount to be paid is equal to 91,000 rupees minus 16,000 rupees. So what's the value? 1, 2, 3. Then 5, 11, 2 with 7. So amount to be paid is 75,000. So what did he do? He pays the remain amount in 15 months. The interest for the loan is 24%. So what is the amount per installment? Amount per installment there are 15 equal months so 75,000 divide by 15 5,000 rupees this is without interest now let's calculate the interest he needs to pay 24% per annually. So here let's calculate the interest. Interest per month. So 5000 into 24% this is annually so you have to divide by 12. Twelve times one, twelve times two. Two zeros get cancelled out, so hundred rupees. So how many months units are there? So this is re using reducing balance method. So you need to calculate the months units. 
So 15 months are there. So 15 times 16 over 2. We know n into n plus 1 over 2. 2 times 8 here. 8 times 5, 40. 4 remaining. 8 times 1, 8 plus 4, 120 months units are there. So what is the total interest? Total interest is each month 100 rupees. There are 120 months units. Calculate the interest. 0, 0, 0. 12 times 1, 12,000 12, rupees. So what is the total amount needs to pay? Total amount is equal to 75,000 plus 12,000 here. That's the interest. So altogether you get 87,000. So what is the monthly installment? Monthly installment is equal to 87,000. You need to divide by 15 because there are 15 equal months. So what's the value? 5, that's 75. So 87 minus 75, you get 12, 12,000. So 12,000, so if it's 120, it's like 8. 8 times 5, 40. 8 times 1, 8 plus 4, 12. So you get 5,800 rupees is the monthly installment. So that's the final answer. Let's see how you get marks. So you have to do all the steps to get the answer here. So when you look at the marking scheme, you get one mark for finding number of shares. Then dividend income, one mark. Then amount to be paid, 75,000, one mark. And then one mark for finding monthly installment. And then interest per month, two marks. So already given one, two, three, four, five, six marks up to this point. Then one mark for months units, seven. And total amount, here one mark here and one mark for the total, eight, nine. And finally, to calculate the monthly installment, that's one mark. So altogether for this question, you will get 10 marks. Question number three, this is about equations, algebra question. Let's do that. The sum of money Amila and Padma have is equal to four times of money Padma has. When Amila gives 100 rupees to Padma, both of them have the same amount of money. Taking Amila's has X rupees and Padma has Y rupees build up two simultaneous equations using X and Y. So you have to be careful. You have to read this part first. Then you can start from the beginning. So X is the amount that Amila has. The sum of money Amila and Padma have. So that means X plus Y is equal to four times of money Padma has. Is equal to four times that. Money Padma has, that means 4y. That's your first equation. Then what's the next one? When Amila gives 100 rupees to Padma. So Amila gives 
100 rupees that's the amount is now x minus 100 then both of them have the same amount so that amount is equal to the y value that's your second equation two unknowns two equations so this is simultaneous equations then solve these equations and find the amount of money Amila has and Padma has. So let's do that how we are going to solve this problem. So from the first one, you can see y terms are there. So we can take all y terms to one side. So let's take x is equal to take y to the other side 4y minus y equals 3y. Then second equation y equals x minus 100. So let's substitute instead of y as x minus 100. So 3 into x minus 100. Now you get an equation only in terms of x. Solve the x value. Let's first expand. 3 times x, 3x. 3 times minus 100, minus 300 is equal to x. Now take all x terms to one side and numbers to the other side. 3x minus x becomes 2x. 300, when you take it to this side, that's 300 here. Then divide by 2, you get x value. 300 divided by 2, you get 100. 50. Then what about y value? y equals x minus 100. x is 150 minus 100. So that's 50 rupees. So you can write the amount that Amila, Amila has is 150 rupees and Padma has 50 rupees. So that's the final answer. So let's give marks. So you are getting two marks for constructing these two equations. And solving, you get 5 marks. X is 150. And Y equals 50. So, altogether, 5 marks for solving part. So, let's give 1 mark here. 1 mark. And here, expanding brackets. 1 mark. Equating 1 mark. And for the method, one mark. So five marks there. Let's do the next part. Amila bought M mangoes each 30 rupees and three guavas each at 20 rupees. Build an inequality using M men. Find the maximum number of mangoes she can buy. So this is Amila bought M mangoes each with 30 rupees. So, what's the total? 30 M. And 3 guavas each at 20 rupees. So, 3 times 20. That's 60 rupees. 3 times 20. That's the total. So, total should be the amount less than she had. So, this is about Amila. So Amila had 150 rupees. 150 rupees. So the total should be less than or equal to 150. So this is an inequality. You have to solve this inequality. So first we'll take this 60 to the other side. 30m is less than or equal to 150 minus 60. You get When you subtract 60 from 150, what do you get? 90. So you get 90 here. 
And then when you divide by 30, m is less than or equal to 90 divided by 30 is 3. So what is the maximum number of mangoes she can buy? This is 3 or less. So the maximum number is 3. three mangoes because the inequality is m less than or equal to three. So how many marks for this part? Let's see. How many marks for this one? You get three marks for this part. So we gave altogether ten marks for this question as well. Question number four, it's about statistics question. The following table shows that Binara's mother's recordings of 30 days of his computer game playing times. Time is given in minutes and number of days given. Which time class interval he spent most? So you have to look at the table and see where you get the highest number of days. That's eight. So, 70 to 90 is the modal class. Then find the mean time spent for computer game. So, you need to find out the mean time. So, let's calculate the mean value. So, here time is given 10 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 70, 70 to 90. 90 to 110, 110 to 130, 130 to 150. And the total we need. And what are the frequencies given? 2, 4, 6, 8, 5, 4, 1. And total frequency? 6, 6, 12, 20, 25, 30. And what are the mid values? You need mid values now. Mid value of the interval. How you do that? Add 10 divide by 2. 10 plus 30, that's 40. Divide by 2, you get 20. This one, 50 plus 30, 80. 80 divided by 2, 40. So we can see each one here adding 20. So we can easily fill the other numbers. 120, 140. Then you need to take fx, multiplication of the frequency and the x values. 2 times 20, you get 40. 4 times 40, 160. 6 times 60, 360. 8 times 80, 640. Then you get 500. 4 times 120, 480, 1 times 140, 140. Now take the total 0, 12, 16, then 16, 420, 26, 32, 3 remaining, 4, 8, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 6. 23, 2320. So, how do you find out the mean value? Mean value is equal to total fx, sigma fx over total frequency. So, total fx is 2320 divided by total frequency is 30. 0, 0 get cancelled out and you get. 3 times 6, 7, 7, 21, and for 12, that's 4. So, 74 is the average number, the mean value that's in minutes. 74 minutes. So, how many marks you can get for this part? So, let's see. 70 to 90, you get one mark. 
and calculating the mean value. So calculating the mid values, you get one mark here and calculating fx, one mark and calculating the total, you get one mark here. Then the mean value, you get three times here. This is not the correct answer here. What's the answer here? I made a mistake here. When you divide by 3, 3 times 7, 21. For 22, it's not 4. So let's do that correction. So what's the answer here? Three times seven, 21. For 22 again, seven, 21. And for 10, that's three. Again, you get 10. So three, three, repeating. So we need to round the value or just keep like this 77.3 minutes. So calculating the mean value, that's two marks. So we have given one, two, three, four, five, six marks for this part. Let's take the next one. Next part, there are 40 minutes, eight periods in a school day. Mother says he spent more than the time of school days to play games in a week. Explain with reasons whether her mother's statement is true or false. So here it says 40 minutes, 8 periods are there in a school day. So 40 minutes and then 8 periods. This is for one day. He spent more than the time of school days to play games in a week. So there are 5 days in a week going to school Monday to Friday. So you have to multiply by five to get total number of minutes for a school day, five school days. So what's the total? Eight times five, 40, 40 times 40, 1,600 minutes. Now, when, you, when we calculate his time, Mother says he spent more than the time of school days to play games in a week. So when we take the mean value, 77.3 minutes, this is per day. And there are 30 days. So when we calculate the number of minutes in a week, so this is 77.3 in a day. So in a week, that means we have to take all seven days per week. School is only for five days, but he spent seven days per week for playing games. So you have to multiply 77 point three times seven. So this is 21, 2 remaining, 7, seven, seven times 7, 49 plus 2, 51, 5 remaining, 7 times 7, 49 plus 5, 541.1 minutes in a week. So definitely here, this value is less than 1600. So mother's statement is false. So here 541.1 is less than 1600 minutes. So you can say mother's statement is false. So how many marks for this one? So finding the time for games in a week, that's one mark. 
2 marks for this part and calculating the time for school that's one mark and then writing the statement you get one mark so two three four and we gave six marks for this part all together 10 marks for the whole question let's do question number five this is about volumes the base of the container a is bumped at the base to up and it is radius radius r so this is radius r this is radius r and height h here h is given the container a is completely filled with soft drinks the whole amount of soft drinks pour into the container b of radius r filled up to a height x so this amount only up to x not fully show that 2r equals 3h minus x consider no waste of soft drinks during pouring to the container so we need to find out the volume of soft drinks here so when you consider this shape this is like there is a container and here this part is like this so you have to find out this part so what you get this is a hemisphere when you consider 3d figure cylinder is the bigger one and this is a hemisphere half of a sphere so when you subtract the volume of sphere from the volume of cylinder you get the amount of water so shall we calculate that first amount of water soft drinks amount of soft drinks is equal to volume of the cylinder pi r squared h pi r squared h minus volume of the hemisphere sphere volume is 4 over 3 pi r cube when you divide by 2 you get 2 thirds pi r cube is the volume of the hemisphere so what you get here so we'll simplify later so keep the answer like this and then we can find out the volume of the soft drinks here with x is the height of the soft drinks not the height of the container so what is the volume of soft drinks from the other container that means it's a cylindrical shape pi r squared pi r squared x x is the height so we can see there's no wastage so both volumes are the same so equate and see pi r squared h minus two thirds pi r cube is equal to pi r squared x can you see pi get cancelled out from the equation then you can cancel out r squared as well divide the whole equation by r squared this get cancelled out you get one r here this will cancel so what is remaining h minus two thirds r is equal to x now take the common denominator as 3 this becomes 3h minus 2r equals x so what is the given answer 2r you have to make 
two are as the subject of the equation. So cross multiply, you get 3h minus 2r equals 3x. Then you cross multiply here. Then what is 2r? Take it to this side. 2r equals 3h minus 3x. So take 3 out and write h minus x equals 2r. That's what you have to show. 3 times h minus x is equal to 2r. So how many marks you are getting for this part? So let's see. You are getting 4 marks for showing this equation. Let's do the next one. Find the volume of soft drinks in container B using logarithms. Take R equals 5.12 and X equals 8.07 and pi as 3.14. Give your answer to the nearest whole number. So what is the volume of soft drinks in container B? Pi r squared, that's 5.12 squared, x, x is 8.07. So we'll use the logarithm table to find out the answer. So here, substitute this one as 3.14. Take logarithms both sides. So let's take v. Log of V is equal to log of this. When you have multiplication, what happens to logarithms? Addition of logs becomes multiplication. So you can write log of 3.14 plus log of this. And there's a power 2. Power 2, you can take it out from the log sign and write 2 log 5.12 plus log of 8.07. Now take the mantis, consider the mantissa. So this is 3 point something. So 0 point when you write in standard form. And this one is 2 times 0 point something. And this also 0 point something. So we have to refer the log tables and find out the answer. So let's Refer the log tables. First one is 31, 4. 31, 4. It's 31, 4. 49, 69. 49, 69. Then 51, 2. 51, 2. 70, 93. And then 87. 87, you have to refer the other table. 87. 90, 69. Now we'll first multiply this. This one, 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 7, 14. You get 1.4186. Now add these two. If you are not okay to add like this, make sure that you write in a column and add decimals. 0 0.4969, 1 1.4186. And then 0 0.9069. 9 plus 6, 15. 15 plus 9, 24. 2 remaining. 10, 16, 22. 2 remain. So 12, 1 remaining. 18, 1 remaining. 2. So 2.8. 224 is 
log of v. You have to take anti log to find the v value. Anti log value of 2.8224. So you have to refer the table and see where you get 8224. That's in the second table, 8224. 8222 two, two is there, so you need another 2. So that means 3. 66, 4, 3. 66, 4, 3. 66, 4, 3. Now, mantissa is 2, that means you have to keep 2 places to the right. 1, 2. So 664.3, but they want the answer correct to the nearest whole number. So that's 664. And this is about volume. And they have not given the units. So we can say cubic units. So let's see how many marks for this part. So you are getting one mark for substituting values here. And then doing all these calculations, referring the log tables, everything, you get three marks for that. And then finally taking the final answer this one one mark and one mark for the final answer 664 so one two three four five six six marks and four marks we have given for the previous question so altogether 10 marks given for this whole question Let's do question number six. So you have given a diagram and asked to find out this equation and find the x value. It's a net of cuboid of total surface area is given 578. So when you fold this, what you get? So one side is seven, the other side is x. And it's a cuboidal shape. So here, the height is also x. This is also x. So when you take the cuboid, this is something like that. So x, x and 7 is given. So this is length, width and height. So what is the total surface area? So total surface area we can find using area for each part and add it. So what are the shapes you are getting? You get three different shapes. So it's easy to find out the surface area using given. It's easy to find the surface area when you write down the three values here like this and then multiply. So each side you get twice. So what is the first side? Surface area is equal to x into x, x squared. Then x into 7, 7x. And 7 into x, 7x. And multiply this by 2. Because each rectangle you get twice. So 6 all together and 3 different rectangles. So that's equal to, what's the total surface area given? 578. This is 578 is equal to, here you get 2x squared. This 7x, this and 7x, 14x times 2, that's 28x. Take all terms to one side. 2x squared plus 28x minus 578 equals 0. Divide the whole thing by 2. 
you get x squared plus 14x minus 289 is equal to 0. So that's what you have given. x squared plus 14x minus 289 is 0. Then you are asked to solve the x value taking root 2 as 1.41. So let's try to solve this. So what are the methods you can use? Either you can use the quadratic formula or completing square method. So let's use completing square method. So you have to take the half of the coefficient of x. So that's, that means 14 divided by 2 and square it. 7 squared is 49. So you have to add 49 to get a square number. Then what you do? When you take 289 to the other side, you have to add the same amount because this is an equation. So this side you get x plus 7 whole thing squared. This side you get 9 and 9, 18, 1 remaining, 9 plus 4, 13, 1 remaining, 338. When you take 338, what you get? You have to write down in the simplest form. Here, yeah. 13 squared into 2. 169 is 13 into 13 times 2. So when you take square root both sides, what happens? x plus 7 becomes 13 root 2. Because here when you take squ uh, square root for squared value, it get cancelled out. So what is the answer? x becomes 13 root 2 minus 7. But root 2 value is given 1.41. Substitute there and find out the final answer. So you have to multiply 1.41 into 13. That's 10 and 3. And add it. So here are two decimal places. 18.33 subtract 7. So what you get? You get 11.33. Then correct to one decimal place. It says correct to first decimal place. So what's the answer? Correct to first decimal place, that's 11.3. Units are given or not given? Just we'll check. This is in centimeters, so the final lines are also in centimeters. So this is in centimeters. That's the x value. So let's take. The marking scheme and see how many marks you are getting. Okay, let's see. So you get four marks for showing the equation. So you have to show this equation. So you get four marks for that, this part. And then when you are solving, Altogether, you are getting six marks. So here, we'll give one mark here. And finding square root one mark. One mark for this step and substituting one mark. And one mark for the final answer and rounding, you get one mark. So the final answer is 11.3 centimeters. So we gave altogether 10 marks for the whole question. Now let's do part B. So you have to answer five questions in this part as well. Let's take question number seven. It's about progression. So sometimes you get 
arithmetic as well as geometric progression. A computer participating to a radio program, Wisdom, has to answer for 18 questions to win. When he is giving correct answers, 500 rupees for the first question and 750 for second question and 1000 rupees for third question, so on, he receives prize money. The prize money received are in an arithmetic progression. So, arithmetic means the difference, the common difference is the same. Find the amount of money receives for eight questions using the formula. So, what is the first term? First value is 500. Second term is 750. Third term is 1000. So, this is the arithmetic progression. What is the common difference? Common difference is any term minus the previous term. So, let's take this one. Or you can do 1000 minus 750 as well. So, you get 250. So, we know the first term and the common difference. Find the eighth term. T8. T8 is... First term, 500 plus 8 minus 1, that's 7, D, 250. So, you get 500 plus 7 times 0, 0, 7 times 5, 35, 3 remaining, 7 times 2, 14 plus 3, 17, 0, 5, 7 plus 5, 12, 1, 2, 2,250. So, that's 2,250 rupees for the 8th question. So, how many marks you are getting for this part? 2 marks. Next part. Find the total amount of prize money received by a competitor who answers for First 12 questions. First 12 questions. So that's sum. So we need S12. So what is the formula we can use? So we can use N. N is 12 divided by 2. 2A plus N minus 1D. 2 times A. That's 500 is the first term. And N minus 1. 12 minus 1 is 11. D is 250 rupees. So, you can find out the total from this equation. Here 12 and 2, 6. Simplify this part. 2 times 500,000. Here 55. 5 remaining. 22 plus 5, 27. Add it. 0, 5, 7, 3. Multiply by 6. 33 remaining, 6 times 7, 42, plus 3, 45, 4 remaining, 6 times 3, 18, plus 4, 22. So, we'll receive 22,500 rupees when you answer 12 questions correctly. So, you get 3 marks for finding this answer. Part 3, if a competitor gives a wrong answer, he has to leave the competition and he will receive half of the prize that he won. If a competitor unable to answer for a question and won 16,875 and left the competition, how many questions that he received to answer? So this means 16,875 means half of it. Because he didn't answer the next question. So multiply by 2 to get the total amount he will get. If he is solving all the questions up to that point, you have to multiply that by 2. Because this amount is the half of the amount for correct answers. So multiply by 2. That should be... The sum of all the terms. But we don't know n. From this equation, we can find 
how many questions he answered. So let's use the sum. So n over 2, 2a, that's 2 times 500 plus n minus 1, d, d is 250. So we can simplify this one and see what is n. So how we are going to simplify. I can first divide the whole equation by 2 this side. This 2 and this 2 get cancelled out and when you divide this by 225 comes. Then I get n 500 plus 125 n when you multiply minus 125. This becomes 2 times 5, 30. 2 times 5, 10, 1 remaining. 2 times 7, 14 plus 1, 15, 1 remaining. 2 times 8, 16 plus 1, 17, 1 remaining. 2 times 6, 12 plus 1, 13, 1 remaining. 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So you get 500 minus 125 is? Three hundred and seventy five, and this is N, and here one hundred and twenty five N. Now, when you take all terms to one side, what you get? One hundred and twenty five N squared plus one hundred plus three hundred and seventy five N, and when you take this term to this side, 33,750 equals 0. We can divide the whole equation by 125. N squared, how many times is this? 3. 3 times this. 125 is 375. Then how many? times of this. So let's divide 33,750 divided by 125. 2, that's 250. Subtract 87, 875. So how many times? If you multiply by 5, 5 times 5. 25, 5 times 2, 10 plus 2. No, more than that. 7, 7 times 5, 35. 3 remaining. 7 times 2, 14. 14 plus 3, 17. 1 remaining. 7 times 1, 7 plus 1, 8. So this is 7. And 270 you get here. Now we need to find out the factors of minus 270. When you add the factors, that should be equal to 3. So let's divide and see what are the factors. When you divide by 3, you get 90. Again, divide by 3, 30. Divide by 3, 10. Divide by 2, 5. So let's see. 3 times 2, 6. 6 times 3, 18 and 15. 18 and 15, the difference is 3. So you can split the middle term to 18 in and 15 in. Then you can take 2 at a time and factorize. Then you take in and out, you get n plus 18. This one, take minus 15 out plus this is 18. 18 times 15 is 270. We found that before. So n plus 18, take it out. And n minus 15 is remaining. So the product is equal to 0. That means what are the solutions? n can be minus 18 or n can be 15.
So, n cannot be a negative answer. So, you can ignore this one and write 15 is n. So, that means he answered 15 questions correctly. Then the question asks how many questions he tried? How many questions that he received to answer? So, that should be 16 because 16 question he didn't answer. So, that's why he got half the amount for 15 questions. So, 16 questions he answered. So, how many marks for this one? How many marks? You are getting two marks for writing down this equation and then two marks for solving and finding the final answer 15 and adding one. So another one mark for the final answer. So altogether five marks for this part. So we have given previously three here and another two altogether. Ten marks for this whole question. Let's do question number eight. Question number eight is about construction question. So you can use only the pair of compass and the ruler. Construct a line segment AB of six centimeters. So you have to first draw a line segment and then you have to take the ruler and the compass and measure six centimeter length. And then mark it on the line. So mark AB and then this is 6 centimeters. Construct the triangle ABC with ABC angle is 120. So B angle is 120 means you have to construct 60 and 60 to make it 120. So let's construct 60. You take any certain distance, mark, mark in the middle with the same length. You have to mark all these. So this is 60. Again, another 60. You can mark the line here again from here. So you get 60 and 60, 120. So that means this angle is 120. And then BC is 7 centimeters. You take the compass and measure 7 centimeter length and then mark the C point. So B with here C point. So this is C point. Then you can connect 7 centimeters, connect B and Connect A and C and complete the triangle. Then construct the circle which touches the side AB at B and passes through C. So that means this is AB is a tangent. So you have to draw a perpendicular line to find out the center because radius and tangent are perpendicular. So let's construct 90 degree angle at B point, so mark two points here and then take a longer length, keep on top of the mark, mark two arcs and then connect the B point 
and this line. So that's 90 degree line. The center is on that line as well as it's on the perpendicular bisector of BC because it passes through C as well. So let's draw the perpendicular bisector. Take any distance. Take any distance. You can draw an arc here, an arc above, and then take the C point. You do the same thing. So you can mark the arc here and here. Now you can connect this point and this point. So that's the perpendicular bisector. Now Whereas the center of the circle is where it cuts these two lines. So here, this is the center. Here, according to this one, it touches AC as well. But you have to think about this line and this line. Now we'll draw the circle. Take the compass. This point is the center and then you take the C distance from there and or B distance, both should be the same. Now you can draw the circle. So it touches the circle at B point with a B line as well as passes through the C point. Then construct a tangent AD to the above circle from point A. But we know AB is also a tangent. So what is the property? The tangent lengths are equal. So we can use that property to draw the other tangent. So we take the AB length and then mark the point where it cuts the circle. Same length. So this should be the D point. And we can connect A point with D and draw the tangent line. That's AD tangent line. And what's the other part? It says give reasons why BDA. BDA angle. So let's connect BD. BDA angle and BCD angle. These two angles are equal. What's the reason? So let's mark those uh, angles. BDC is this angle and BCD angle is this. What's the reason? Can you see this is the tangent line and BD is a chord. The angle between the tangent and the chord is same as the opposite angle according to Alternate segment theorem, that's BDA is equal to BCD. So what's the reason? Alternate segment theorem. So let's skip marks for this part. So first one, drawing the line segment one mark and two marks for drawing the triangle and constructing the perpendicular bisector one mark and drawing the perpendicular line one mark and drawing the circle one mark all together three marks for the third part and then drawing the tangent line you get two marks and final part giving the reason for these two are equal that's two marks two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten marks for this question question number nine so you have to prove certain things and we'll do step by step in the given diagram ut is equal to ts so ut is equal to 
TS and it's equal to SR. So these three lengths are equal. UP is equal to SQ. SQ is this length. And PT, PT distance, this distance is equal to T V this distance. Show that UTP triangle and TSV triangles are congruent. So let's take UTP triangle and TSV triangle. So in these two, T S V, this triangle and this one. So here in this triangle we can see U T equals T S. This length equal as well as B P T is given that's equal to T V. All these are given. And what can you say about this angle? This angle and this angle both are equal. Opposite angles are equal. So you can write UTP angle is equal to VTS angle. Opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Two lengths and included angle are equal. So the two triangles are congruent. TSV triangle. What's the case? SAS. Two sides and included angle. SAS. So, how many marks for this part? You are getting three marks for identifying the case and the sides. So, three marks for that part. Part 2 show that TQRV TQRV is a palagram. So let's connect these two. And here these information given before this length is equal to this length and this one equals to this. So what can you say about this one? So here we found out these two triangles are congruent before these two triangles. So what can you say about VS and UP? Both are equal because it's corresponding elements of congruent triangle opposite to this angle is Vs here Up. This is corresponding elements of congruent triangles. But we know that here, this is equal to this, but we know that this is equal to this as well. So here, UP is equal to SQ, that's, that was given before. So that means these two are equal. VS is equal to SQ. And also, can you see from this, TS is equal to SR. TS equals SR. This is also given. So what can you say? Diagonals of here when you consider this quadrilateral diagonals are bisecting each other. So diagonals are bisecting each other. So straight away you can say it's a palagram. Diagonals bisect each other. So therefore T 
TQRV. TQRV is a palindrome. So how many marks for that one? So you get two marks for identifying that. So we have given five marks for those two parts. Let's take the third part. Show that PQ to UR is two thirds. So these three given and this length given to this length and we found these two are equal. Now what can you say? Now look at PVQ triangle. P, V, Q triangle. This is the midpoint of one side and this is the other midpoint of the other side. So according to midpoint theorem, what can you say? T, S, T, S is parallel to P, Q as well as T, S is half of PQ according to midpoint theorem. Now, what can you say? This is parallel to this one and half of that. But when you consider UR, UR we can write down as here same length means three times of Ts because ut equals Ts equal to Sr. So three times of Ts is ur. Now let's connect these two. So Ts I can write half of Pq. So what's the ratio between Pq over Qr? PQ over UR. Yeah, you can take 2 to this side and 3 down. So that's 2 thirds. So how many marks for this part? You are getting 2 marks for this part as well. So 7 marks given for 3 parts and Let's do the last part. Show that area TQV is equal to area of PQV. Let's draw the triangles and see. TQV. TQV is this. This triangle. And PQU, PQU, this triangle. So you have to show that these two are equal. How you are going to do that? So let's connect the other ones that we did. So we showed that this is a parallelogram. So let's mark all the information that we had before. So we found this is a parallelogram. So this line, this line is parallel to this one. And these lines are equal as well. So this is equal to this. This is equal to this. And then we found this line is parallel to this line as well according to Midpoint theorem. So, how can we find out? And what are the information? We had this length is equal to this length. And these three lengths is equal. And PQ becomes PQ and QR means two thirds. So that means this distance is equal to this distance. So you can 
write down this is a parallelogram. According to the previous parts, we can first write P Q S U. P Q S U is a parallelogram. What's the reason? Because here P Q is parallel to U R line as well as from the previous part we found out the ratio between P Q and U R is two thirds. So two thirds is equal to P Q means so U S is equal to us distance should be equal to pq one pair of opposite sides equal and parallel it's a parallelogram one pair of sides equal and parallel this is a parallelogram so According to that parallelogram, P U Q is the area that's bisecting with the Q U diagonal. The parallelogram area bisecting that. So you can say P U T P U P U Q. P U Q area triangle is same as U Q S. U Q S triangle area because U Q is the diagonal. That's the diagonal of this triangle. So that is equal to this area. Then what else we can say about this area? This area now we have to figure out what is this area is equal with. Now the other triangle is we want to take this TQV. T Q V this this area is same as this area. What's the reason? Because this is also a parallelogram. T R Q P is also a parallelogram. So let's write that one. T R Q P T R Q T R Q P is a palagram What's the reason? Because P Q again length is equal to T R P Q length is equal to T R from the previous one two thirds of U R is equal to P Q. So that means T R two parts are same as this one P Q and parallel as well. So you can say T Q is T R as well as P Q is parallel to T R. So it's a parallelogram because one pair of sides equal and parallel. Now when you consider that, that parallelogram you can say this area and this area is the same. PTQ triangle area, PTQ triangle area is same as PTQ, PTQ is same as TQR because TQ is the diagonal. TQR triangle 
because TQ is the diagonal. Now look at carefully now we found these two equal, these two. So let's take a different color and highlight this area is equal to this area. And earlier we found this area is it same as this because TR is a diagonal that's also a parallelogram. So here we can say this part or here diagonal is here this area is same as this area. So here this is TR or VQ both are diagonals. So the areas are equal. The triangle areas are equal. So what can you say now? These two areas are equal. TVQ, so let's write here. TVQ triangle, TVQ triangle area is same as PTQ this area is equal to this area and what can you say about this one now this parallelogram and this parallelogram areas are the same because same base and in between two parallel lines. So from that you can say the, the same area is here as well. PQU area is the same because it's, it's the half of the parallelogram. So how we are going to write down this? So you can say PQSU, PQSU, parallelogram area is same as PQSU is same as PQRT. Because PQ is the same base and in between same parallel lines. So that's why the areas are equal. So PQ U triangle, therefore, we can say PQU triangle area is same as PQU triangle area is same as VTQ, VTQ or PQV triangle area. T, Q, V, triangle area. So you need to basically identify the two parallelogram areas are the same. So when you take the diagonals, the, these two triangles are the areas that you get when you divide by a diagonal. So half of the area of the parallelograms is this one as well as this one. So these two are equal. So how many marks you are getting for this part? You will get three marks for identifying all these. So we gave altogether 10 marks for the whole question. Let's take question number 10. So you have to Mark it and draw the diagram. This is a trigonometric question. 
A is the main gate. From the main gate, C is the main lecture hall, 50 degrees, 120 meters, and D is the principal's office, 140 degrees, 160 meters are situated. Copy the given diagram and enter the above data. So here, from C, C is the, this is from A, main gate, C is 50 degrees, so here bearing is given from north 50 degrees, somewhere here 120 meters, 120 meters, this is given as 50, so that's C point. And D point is the principal's office, 140 degrees, 140 from north, so somewhere here, that's 160 degrees, that's 140 degrees, 160 meters, that's D point, so this whole angle is 140. Copy the given diagram and enter the above data. So you can mark C and D. So how many marks you are getting? To draw the graph, to draw the diagram, you are getting three marks. Let's try to answer the other parts. Using trigonometric ratios, find the distance from main lecture hall, that's C to the AB road. So let's see, C to AB road. So AB road, you have to draw the perpendicular line. So they are asking the distance here. If it's a perpendicular line, what is this distance? So let's take this is as X. So how we are going to find out this x, we know this angle 50 and this is 120. So let's take A, A, C, we'll put E or some letter here, A, E, C triangle. So what's the appropriate ratio? To this angle, this is opposite and this 120 is the hypotenuse. So you can use sine ratio. Sine 50 is x over 120. So sine 50 equals x over 120, cross multiply and find x 120 times sine 50. So you have to refer sine table and get the value sine 50. So you have to refer the second table. Sine 50 value is 0.7660. 0 0.7660 times 120. So let's multiply. 0 0.7660 multiplied by 120. 120. 0 and multiply by 2. 12, 13. 2 times 7, 14 plus 1, 15. So add it together and then put 4 decimal places. You get 91.92. This is in meters and you don't have to round it. Just give the answer in this form. So you get 91.92. So you get three marks for that. Using ratio, you get three marks. Then let's take the next one. Find the magnitude of ACD. Let's look at the diagram. A, C, D. So let's connect this one. A, C, D. You are asked to find this angle. A, C, D, this angle. 
what can we do now look at carefully this whole thing is 140 and this is 90 what is this angle this angle 140 minus 50 90 degrees so we can see CAD angle is 90 so right angle triangle you can use the trigonometric ratios again to this angle this is opposite 160 and 120 is adjacent so you can use tan ratio so what is this angle what is this angle we need to find so ACD first we'll write CAD is 90 so that's a right angle triangle so that's C 90 so what's the other value ACD required angle is ACD so tan of ACD is opposite side was 160 adjacent side was 120 so take the ratio 0 0 4 times 3 4 times 4 4 over 3 1 point 3, 3, 3, 3, like that. So you have to find out the ACD angle that's tan inverse of 1.333. So let's look at the tangent table and see where you get 1.333. So let's take the table. 1.333. Well, we have to look at the table 1.333 here we have 1.327 so 3270 and we need 333 so how many more we need we need let's do the calculation 0 0.333 0 0.32 Three two seven zero is there. So how many more we need? We need sixty. Sixty more. So what's the value? Check where you get sixty. Yeah. Seven. Fifty eight is there. So what's the angle? Fifty three zero and seven. 53 so we can write down 53 degrees and 7 minutes to get this angle so ACD equals this angle so how many marks for this part you are getting you are getting four marks for that question so four marks for that part so all together we have given 10 marks for the whole question let's do question number 11 it's about sets there are 70 members in isuru farmer society so all together 70 so let's mark when we are reading so 70 is there among them 42 farmers were distributed jack saplings and so here 42 this one is 42 jack saplings and 15 farmers were distributed jack and mango saplings jack and mango saplings all together 15 so that means this is 7 so this should be 15 minus 7, that's 8. Then the number of farmers received only jack saplings is equal to, this one is equal to twice the number of farmers received only jack and mango fruits. Jack and mango is there. Only jack and mango means this is 8. Jack and mango only that part is 8. 
So twice the number of that. So two times eight, this should be 16. Then what's the next one? Enter the data in the Venn diagram. So what are the other values we can find? So we can find this value as well. Eight and seven, 15. 15 plus 16, you get 31. 42 minus 31, you get here yeah, 11. Then what else we can mark? So we can't mark the other ones because not given because we have to find these two. So this is what you can enter for the first part. So how many marks for that one? So you are getting 16, 11, 8, 2. So you are getting 3 marks for this information. So let's do the next part. The members who received only coconut saplings is three times of members who received all types of saplings. So coconut is three times. Find the number of farmers received mango saplings. So let's take that. So all is here. So only coconut is three times. Only coconut sapling is three times of members. So three times seven. So seven is for all. So seven times three. This one is 21. Now they are asking what is the number of farmers received mango saplings? Mango saplings from this circle. So we have to fill this circle. Coconut circle. So how can you fill that? Everything is 40. 11 plus 7 is 18. 18 plus 21, 39. So this should be 1. Now we can count this circle. 8 plus 7, 15. 15 plus 1, 16. 16 plus 2, 18. 18 farmers received mango saplings. Then how many marks for that part? You are getting two marks. And next one. All members who received mango saplings were given a jack sapling as well. Draw a Venn diagram to show this information and include numbers in each region. So here we have to draw the diagram again. So when you draw the diagram, so we can see So here, this is jack and coconut saplings and this is mango sapling below. But it says all members who received mango saplings were given a jack sapling means now that mango circle is inside the jack circle. So that's that's a subset. That's what it's given. So now you are getting this is mango, this is jack and this is coconut. And you have to fill all the values. So what you do? You have to fill all the values. 70 and here if this is here, what happens here? This 2 comes here. 10. And this is 8. 8 and 10 in this region. So here 8 and this is 10. And uh, other values are the same. 
11, 16, 21. Sixteen, eleven. This is twenty-one. Eleven. So sixteen was there here. Now check again. What's the total here? Twenty-one and here eight twenty-nine. So this is forty. That's correct. And here, when you consider jack circle, this is sixteen, ten, twenty-six. 26 plus here mango circle. What was the total for mango? 18. So 18 is there. So the rest is there. So this is the diagram. And did we include all the parts? Yeah, we included all the parts. Nothing outside so far. So let's see, we didn't put the outside number. So we can put outside number as well now. Just check what is the total now. If you take 42, 42 plus 1, 43, 43 plus 2, 45, 45 plus 21, 66. So 4 should be outside. The three circles. So that part we can mark it here for outside. So that's the full diagram. So let's give marks for that. So two marks for that part. And then final part. In the Venn diagram drawn in part 3, shade the region that those who received only jack saplings and coconut saplings. Only jack and coconut. Jack and coconut, only that part is this region. So this region. So you are getting how many marks for that part? You are getting one mark for shading one mark for shading this part so let's see whether we did all the questions so here one mark given for this part and Two, three, three marks, three, four, five, five plus three, eight, and here we didn't write down this answer. Find the number of farmers received only jack and coconut sapling. So here, 11. So that one you are getting here, this number. Two marks as well. So all together now, ten marks given for the whole thing. Let's do question number twelve. So you have to prove this C O D equals R A E. So let's do that. P is the center of the circle, the tangent ABC, ABC drawn to the circle at B. The points C and D are on the circle of the center O and the point E is on the circle with center P, this circle. B E BE is equal to BD. This length is equal to this one. AB, AB length is equal to AE because these are tangents. Show that COD, this angle, 
COD angle is equal to RAE. RAE means this angle. So let's try to do that. So when you consider BED triangle, BED triangle, what can you say? It's an isosceles triangle because BE is equal to BD. So you can say this angle. We'll put X. This is equal to this. BED angle is equal to BDE angle. Isosceles triangle. What else we can mark? So when you consider this triangle, this is DBC. Now what is this angle? We want DOC angle. So DOC and what's the relationship between DBC angle? That should be half of that. So let's take another letter because we can't... Uh, write in terms of x now. So we can write if this is 2y, this is y, half of that. So let's write that one. C O D angle, that's 2y and that's equal to 2 times D B C angle. Because COD, I'll write the reason COD is twice of DBC. Angle subtended at the center is double as the angle subtended on the circumference. So that's the reason. So this is why. But we know, look at this is a tangent. And if you take BD chord, this is the angle between the chord and the tangent. That should be equal to this angle. Alternate segment theorem. So there you get y equals x. So you can write CBD. CBD angle, that's y equals to BED angle. That's x. So x and y both are equal according to alternate segment theorem. So x and y both are the same. Now what can we say about this angle? A, B, E angle. This angle should be same as E, D, B angle. So that's X. What's the reason? Alternate segment theorem. So this is the tangent and this is a chord. E, B, E is a chord. So you can write E, B, E, B, A angle is same as E, D, B. E, D, B, that's X. Again, Alternate segment theorem. Now we know AE and AB lengths are equal. Isosceles triangle, if this is X, this is also X. So we can write. A, B, E angle is same as A, E, B angle. That's X because of isosceles triangle. Then what can you say? What is R, A, E angle? R, A, E angle is the exterior angle is the sum of opposite interior angles. So that becomes 2x. So this becomes 2x. 
because exterior angle is the sum of opposite interior angles. That's the reason. So here we found RA is 2X and here COD is 2Y. So that same as COD is 2Y or 2X, same thing because we found X and Y are both are equal. So that means RAE angle same as COD. So that's the proof for proof of the whole thing. So you have to step by step write everything. So we'll give marks finding this one. We'll give one mark. So we'll give marks for each question, each part. This is one mark. And this is one mark because of this and here again one mark for this identifying the theorem one mark again one mark and identify this one for alternate segment theorem Seven here, one mark and one mark and equal to this one, one mark. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And finally, writing these are equal, one mark. So all together, we have given 10 marks for the whole question. So we completed all 12 questions in paper 2. So part A, 5 questions you have to do out of 6 and part B, again 5 questions out of 6. Make sure that you do the paper first and then watch my video to check your answers.